let's get to the ladies, man. Shout out to the ladies. Uh, WNBA, you know, this, the, the new season is here. I'm hoping that the Liberty, you know, they do their thing this year. I uh, was a Sabrina Ionescu, um, the number one overall pick a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm looking forward to her doing her thing. I want to see the Liberty do well this season. I want to want a championship for, for women's basketball here uh, in New York. Um, but the season is underway. But uh, there's something that I did want to speak about. And this is something that, I, you know, you can actually really speak to, uh, Nikki, is because you because you are a female professional basketball player who is currently, well, not currently, because hey, right now you're in New York, but you play overseas basketball. I want to talk about this Brittany Griner uh, situation and what's going on with that. First of all, talk talk to the people at home just about about what it's like as a female basketball player going overseas to play basketball. Um. Yeah. So, what we do is, you know, a team signs us. We go to the team. It's like a, a country. It could be any country, and um, you get there. They welcome you. They put you in an apartment. And then basically you're just there on your own. I mean, you're there, you have to go grocery shopping on your own. You have to find out where everything is in the neighborhood. You basically have moved to another country. You know, it's not like a resort. It's not, you know, shiny and glittery. It's not like that. It's, it's like you're a regular person now that just moved abroad and you have a job. So you have to go to practice every day. And sometimes, you know, in our cases with the women, we don't have as much resources as far as like basketball or treatment or, you know, several coaches. And usually we'll have like one coach and an assistant coach. We don't have like tons of coaches. So that changes the aspect of, aspect of the game. You know, we don't get a lot of individual training. Um, and that's just to the fewer, in, the fewer resources that we have as women. And so, um, but a player like Brittany Griner, who is like super high caliber, when she goes overseas, she plays for big, big clubs, like the club in Russia, which they have tons of money. So I'm sure that their accommodations are much higher than the ones that I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. But overall, we're as women players, we've always like received less, you know, when it comes to resources and accommodations and whatnot. But the language barrier overseas is a challenge for anyone, you know? So we go over there and we're expected to like adopt the culture, embrace the culture, even the system in basketball is different. And so that's what we do. We go there, we kind of embrace the system. We embrace their culture, their everyday lifestyle. And then we also have to get in tune with the language because sometimes the coaches are more comfortable speaking in their tongue language. And then they'll have somebody just translating everything when you think about it, it's very difficult for a coach to want to say something and have to say it to somebody else to say it to somebody to, to tell you, you know, yeah. and then it might not come out right. So there's a lot of confusion sometimes and miscommunication, let's say. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I can't imagine what Griner is going through, having to be in the system, you know, in the jail and talk to lawyers or whoever and not be able to speak to them in English you know directly or maybe they can't speak English to her so I know for sure whatever she's going through is tough um because just alone with the with the language barrier is like a tough situation to overcome and um she's fighting for her life now she's like in a prison she can you imagine asking for help hey I need help and the people are not really understanding or really don't care you know yeah. it's like whatever what are you saying we don't know wait for the translator maybe they're saying who knows but I couldn't imagine. I mean, when I need something and I try to speak to some of my like managers of the team and they don't speak good English, I get frustrated. You know, I'm always respectful, but I'm just saying it's the frustrating process. It's like you want to communicate certain things to the managers or people and they can't speak, you know, they can't understand you and you can't understand them. So it's like a two way thing. It's not just like, oh, you should know English. It's like, okay, I'm in your country, but I'm sorry, I, I don't know the language either. We're both kind of like in an issue. Yeah. So, and you're, I and mean, you're, I can't you're imagine. Free, you're not, you're not in, in Brittany Grand situation. You still have those issues. Yes, exactly. And I, and I can walk around free. I can like look on my phone and maybe figure it out. Google Translate, I can do things. She's now locked away. I mean, 
you know, it's like whatever they tell her, they might just not even respond ever to her. You know, I mean, I, I can't imagine what she's going through. And those countries like that, sometimes like the older countries, you know, they don't care to learn English sometimes, yeah. you know, like the older um, population. So who knows what's happening with the judges and with, you know, the law enforcement. Like, I have no clue. But if if I, I just, you know, I just pray, I've been praying for her and I hope that everyone's fighting to bring her back. Yeah, and I and I will say this because you know we first uh, spoke about the story, like you know, like two months now. I feel like it's been, it might be like a little bit over two months now yeah. um, since we first heard about it, and she was actually locked up for a little while before we even heard that she that she was actually locked up. The problem with Brittany Griner, which kind of makes this like a worst possible situation is that she war. Was locked up in prison while a war is going on that, that Russia is involved in yeah. and Russia already has issues with the with the United States so it makes things even more complicated now to help Brittany Griner in the situation because if we're at war and I don't even rock with you like that anyway. I don't rock with your country like that. I'm not going to be inclined to say, oh, let me stop everything that's going on right now while we're in the middle of this war so we can get some basketball player out of out of jail. I'm sure it's not a priority right now. Yeah, um, right. I am happy, though, that the United States is finally getting involved. Um, I, I, I mean, it's I, was, oh, I just saw that like two days ago that the United States is getting involved. Yeah, me too. yeah. I feel like you know, something should have probably happened a lot sooner um, than this. You know, and I, the only situation I could really compare this to would be the uh, Leangelo Ball uh, situation with the guys um, was from UCLA over in China. And, and, and Trump something yeah. had to kind of step in and help out with that. But, you know, at the time, China wasn't at war. Yeah. That, that changes things a lot. Um, so, you know, my prayers again, you know, like, like you said, are with Brittany Griner. I hope she's able to come home safely, um, especially, you know, for what they're, you know, holding her for. Um, and that's one thing, you know, we have to understand as well, not even just for, you know, athletes, but just people in general, when you go to other countries, they have different laws for everything it's not the same as here in the united states so for something that you may be able to get a little desk appearance ticket for here it may not be that way in another country and you know then you got other countries penalize you differently than the united states does as well so you have to be very conscious of that when you're overseas and you're in these different places yeah i agree totally you hit it right on the right on the dot i mean they have different rules, different laws. And it's just unfortunate that that happened to her. And at this time, you know, the timing is bad. The whole situation is just sucks, man. It just sucks. Yeah. You know, but I mean, thank God that she's like, uh, like I said, a high caliber player. She's very well known. Mm -hmm. I think that that will work on her side. I mean, imagine if she was just a regular person, like regular, you know, player or even just a non-athlete. I mean, she would never even maybe make the papers. So we wouldn't even heard about it. Yeah, we would have never even heard about it. She would just be stuck there. So, you know, That's at least true. even with the with the, you know, Brittany Grant, we're talking about one of the biggest stars in, in the, the WNBA. WNBA. And it's still that still is not enough. To you know what I mean? Because because maybe if we're talking about if it was the Olympics or something like that, and it's like a Chris Paul or LeBron, things are a little bit a little bit different, maybe. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we're talking about still, we're talking about one of the biggest stars in the WNBA. Yeah. You know, that one is that one is it's a tough, it's a tough situation. But again, I yeah. hope she can, she can get out and, and come home to her family and her friends. Um and get back to her life. The season uh, again, you know, we started the segment off talking about the WNBA season. You know, and, and 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 tell me, Nikki, um, how are things looking this season? Who you you know, who, who do you think is uh is gonna is gonna make that jump this season? Um, I think Phoenix is always a good team as well. They have a strong team. You know, they have a 
uh, Skyler and, and everybody else, you know, and um, Tarasi, I believe as well. Yeah. I think they also just picked up Tina Charles. Um, huge, these are huge talents. They have Kia Nurse, you know, so like their team is stacked. And I think that they're definitely a team to look out for come playoff time. I think Sue Bird wants to come back to Seattle and, you know, really. Hold on, we, 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 we uh, y'all know how it goes in New York. I hear them and Jewel Lloyd, Jewel Lloyd, and everybody. Oh, yeah, here on the sirens. Yeah, you yeah. know, I live in the hood. So, <laughs> and somebody oh. outside right now, they outside wilding. I got to stay away from the windows. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, Seattle is also a good team that I think is strong always each year. But I'm rooting for Liberty. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a New York girl. I'm always going for the Liberty. Um, for us, you know, like you said, we have Sabrina. Um, we also have Natasha Howard, the big girl. She's really good. She's tough. Um, we have N- Naya. You know, she always does her thing. Mm-hmm. Um, strong. I, I, I'm probably not pronouncing her name right the correct way, but her. Then we have Dee Dee Richards, who's like a super uh, energetic, you know, helps the team in that way. And I think that we'll, with, the new, with the new coach uh, that they just picked up, I think they have a good chance. It seems like they've been productive so far practice-wise when I look at their facility practices and, you know, I look into their stories. So I'm, I'm excited, excited to see what happens. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to get to a game this year. I usually, you know, try to check out at least one uh, Liberty game a season. Shout out to uh, Sean Fontaine. Happy birthday to Sean. Uh, he's, when he was working for the... Uh, for the Liberty when they were up in uh, Westchester, he get yeah, us, you know, yeah, he get us tickets to go to the games. So I gotta go out and, and uh, support the ladies uh, this season. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Come on, live. Bye, the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Hi, Fans, Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real. 